Hey everybody, a few weeks ago I posted a cool little video talking about my recovery. That's right, 10 years without a drink of alcohol, so I thought today we would all celebrate with a bubbly little quilt block. That's right, we're gonna tackle the Cocktail Hour by Natalie Crabtree. Let's party! Celebrate good times, everybody. Come on, it's time to party and have a good time. That's right, I'm Rob Appel, your host right here at Making It Fun by Michael Miller Fabrics. We are super excited to see all of you for yet another amazing tutorial, patchwork style today, presenting this wonderful cocktail hour block from Natalie Crabtree. Now you know at Michael Miller Fabrics, we have wonderful inspirational free download patterns of all different styles. I love this one because of the theme, of course. It's all about having a good time. It's got beautiful uh, cocktail glasses and wine bottles and some super fun little applique parts. There's some cherries and olives and limes and swizzle sticks and all kinds of great stuff through the pattern. Today's goal in the video is to keep it kind of brief, so within a three or four hour window, and walk you through the construction of the block. It's super fun, super easy, and the cocktail combos are awesome. Now, I was joking a little bit around partying and all of that because I did post a few weeks ago that I am a recovering alcoholic. I'm super proud to share with all of you. It's been 10 years since my last drink, but I do love to celebrate with a little something bubbly. So you can see here, Mike and I, uh, we make kombucha here at home in the kitchen and we really enjoy it. My favorite particular flavor comes from my father-in-law's orange tree. The oranges are terrible for peeling and eating, but they're wonderful to juice and make great kombucha out of. So at any rate, that's why I've chosen the orange fabric, which is our hash dot from Michael Miller Fabrics. It is the perfect, well, I mean, just look at this, right? Is that not the perfect bubbly little orange drink as well? And we'll use some for the lime and for the cherry. And we are also using the cocoa fabric, which is one of the wonderful new basics blenders from Michael Miller Fabrics. Comes in 50 shades, super cool, and it has a really neat little texture. So I replaced one of the original fabrics because I'm using the basics here at Michael Miller with the cocoa and then the cotton couture. And one of the things we like to talk about at making it fun is how we use our different fabrics to apply not only the color, but the texture and the contrast. So please note, I've used all textured fabrics for the body of the design and then a solid for the background so that when it's finished, all of the, um, all my, what the words, where'd the words go? All of the focus, all of the focus is on the actual design of our wonderful little glass. So at any rate, free pattern, link is in the description below. Michael Miller Fabrics, get inspired, lots and lots of free patterns out there. And so as we dive right in, I am literally just gonna follow the steps as you see. I'll keep them close to make sure I don't mess it up too much. And I'm happy to share the sizes with you because it is a free pattern. So step one, we are gonna have two blocks, five inches square. And then this skinny little piece here, I've even written on the back so I will be able to keep it straight, is a one and a half inch by five inch strip. And you know what? I better hit this with the iron before we even get started. Apparently those little elves I have in my studio that come in late at night to get everything ready Ready for me? Missed a step. So let's just take care of this real quick with a nice hot iron, making sure that that just doesn't add any extra fabric down the road. We may need to trim, but nonetheless, we're gonna go right sides together with our one and a half by five against the two five inch squares. We're gonna put this in the middle of the block with a quarter inch seam allowance on both sides. And this will actually be the stem itself of the glass. And once we have our two squares uh, stitched to the rectangle, let's just go ahead and take a moment and press. And I'm just gonna press um, into that center strip because it's easiest. So from the solid into the textured fabric, couture to cocoa we go. <laughs> Okay, and then we're just gonna set this unit aside for a little bit later. Again, this is just the stem in the glass. This is a very easy one, so we've gotten that taken care of. And we go on to the next page within our instructions. So here, we're actually building what becomes the base of the glass. We're gonna do a couple of parts and pieces here, but we're gonna focus right away um, on one of these rectangles. This rectangle here, this is the cocoa or the fabric you're using for the glass, not the bubbly, the glass. Okay, so this is gonna be a one and three quarters by four and a half. And then these little squares are each 
one and three quarters square, so one and three quarters on all four sides, or eight sides, depending on what you're really counting here. And we could have drawn a diagonal line from side to side, but I was using a purple chalk pencil, so I think you see the problem with that. Therefore, I used my iron. I'm hoping you can see that I pressed these little squares in half to go ahead and get myself a diagonal. That diagonal is gonna be a sewing line now. We're basically gonna build what would be kind of like a flying geese block or a diagonal stitch line block here. So follow me to the machine. Let me show you real close what this means. I'm going to use that drawn line or the pressed line now as a seam guide um, sewing line. Actually, I'm sewing right on the line is what I'm trying to say. So corner to corner here, right sides together, of course all the way out that end. And then as I go ahead and grab the other square to put it on, I just want to make sure that as I sew these together, these are going to be coming up to form that point, which will give us a really cool tapered base on our glass. I don't know if it's a wine glass. It looks like a martini glass, I guess, but boy, it's been a long time since I've had a martini. My grandfather made my wife and I once a martini that was so strong, I don't think I ever needed another one. But that was his favorite. <laughs> okay, kids. So once we have this taken care of now, I want you to be careful, not only for your fingers, but also for your block. We're gonna give ourselves roughly a quarter inch. We're going to trim off the excess or now the small corner here. And again here. You can actually just set those on the floor. We won't use those again. And now as I go to press, I'm gonna go from the textured into the solid corner or from the rectangle out to the square corner. Okay, so now that makes what becomes the center section, but we're just gonna add a couple of extra little pieces here uh, to either side to go ahead and fill this in to make it up to becoming the same size here as our block. And that information is also listed right here in the instructions, but those little pieces, in case you're just following along, is one and three quarters by three and a half inches each. There are two of those. So we're gonna get those prepared, throw those on real quick. Told you that was quick, right? So that's what that looks like. And let's just go ahead and run it over to the iron as well. And yes, the little tips or the little points at the bottom of the glass will also go and go missing. So it's not gonna be a real sharp point. It's gonna be a blunt tip that you see here. And that will make your glass so much more stable so you can put it on a beautiful quilted tablecloth and let's get back to the block. Okay, so that's gonna go there for now. And of course we'll go there permanently in a little bit. Next step though, another super simple one, we're gonna take the bubbly, we're gonna take the juice, and in the quilt, there's a bunch of different colors represented. This is what makes it fun. So you can position it around for color balance, but also your favorite beverages, like I said. So I'm gonna use my orange hash dot with my uh, really cool cocoa color there. Now remember, the cocoa is the top of the glass that you're seeing, so this is the color, the orange here, that represents your favorite beverage. So let's go ahead and get these stitched together. Oh, and I forgot to mention, the skinny strip is one and three eighths by eight and three quarters. The uh, beverage strip is three inches by that eight and three quarters. Three by th eight and three quarters for your big colored beverage strip. I do love the way that Natalie used the hash dot originally to represent the bubbles in the beverages. I think that's really cool. So also our garden pin dot, especially now that we have a metallic garden pin dot fabric would be really cool as bubbles as well in your beverages, I think. Yeah. Okay, let's take a moment and just press this. Um, I'm just gonna press it up into the narrow strip. I don't really have much to say about the pressing today because we're not really interlocking any of our seams. This is just very simple this way. Okay, so now we basically have the beverage with the top strip of the glass, but we're gonna need to go ahead and angle these out as well. We're gonna do it like we did earlier in our little base of the glass piece very simply. And we're gonna do those with a couple of these are three and seven eighths inch squares, if I remember correctly. And you can see these are squares that again, have just been pressed in half because of that purple pencil problem I'm having. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just line these up corner to corner here, and I'm gonna go ahead and sew again right on the line. And I do have a habit when I use this pressed versus drawn line. I like the, the fabric that's been pressed to kind of be 
poking up versus poking down. It just seems to sit nicer on the fabric there. Sewing right on the folded or drawn line. That is the stitch line today. And just like earlier, we're making a V, so please make sure you take the time to align your fabrics so that they're coming together at a point. Or almost a point. They won't touch. Sorry, didn't want to confuse you there. Let's go ahead and do the same thing where we're going to sew right along the pressed line and the purple square fabric coming through. And again, before we press these open, just take a moment with your rotary cutter and use your ruler to protect the fingers, protect the block. Trim those away. Make sure you're trimming on the outside of the line. Okay, and now we're gonna just press these as well. Again, kind of pressing into the solid. It's easiest to press into these corner pieces than it is into the center when we have a block unit that is happening just like this. Okay, we are all but done with this one, but like the base, we're not quite as wide as we need to be, so I've got a couple of these other little small strips that are gonna drop in right here. Okay, so these are gonna fall in both sides. Again, nice and quick. And again, I told you that was quick. Now these little rectangles were one and three eighths by three and seven eighths to make everything match and fill in. But we still have one more piece to sew onto the top portion of our glass where our beverage is. And I'm gonna point this out because I made a mistake last night when I was prepping for today's work, today's video, and I was scratching my head and pulling my hair out and all of this, and it was no other mistake than my own. What had happened here is I cut some 10 inch strips because when I printed my pattern, the fall off just said 10 here and then the half inch was down here. So at any rate, these little strips that go across the top are 10 and a half inches because we're making an entirely 10 and a half inch block. So just be careful, double check all of those mathematics as you're reading through the pattern because you're printing out your own patterns. So it's not impossible that your printer may reformat the way that it looks a little bit and that could be an issue. So I found that the hard way, but it's quilting and I had scraps and so I was able to recover very easily. Okay, last thing we need to do for this portion is just go ahead and press it and assemble all three of our parts. So we're gonna have our base, the top, and the stem. So I'm just gonna go the stem to the base, and I'm gonna take a moment, I'm gonna make sure while everything's coming together in here that I'm as close to centered and matched up as possible. That's the only part that's crucial in this block here. Okay, I'll take a second and uh, just press this up. And as I was saying, you can see centering that there. Do the same for the bottom. And it couldn't have been much easier than that, right, folks? Again, super fun and easy design. I really do enjoy the patchwork projects like this that are um, design element like as well, even though I am known for my applique stuff. So let me take also a second real quick and grab this one off the wall because I want to talk about this a little bit, but I did get uh, a little excited at the party here. So. I have already taken the time in following the instructions here to 
Add in some of the cherries and the olives. I've got the lime. I've got the swizzle stick. And these are all fun other fabrics that were cut out. There is an applique page. It's included for free with the pattern as well. As you well know, when you print this out, you want to take a ruler and measure over it to make sure that it's exactly one inch. I was running my bleed, but it was very easy to figure out where the bottom portion of my lime was. So don't worry about things like that. But what I really, really want to point out is you can see here that I've overlapped where my quarter inch seam allowances would be. So even though I put my applique in now on the block, the appliques actually kind of go over onto the sashing within the block itself and the quilts or in the rows in between. So take the time to assemble all of your patchwork first and then enjoy going back and creating these clever appliques of, whoops, the cherry or the lime. Oh, that looks like Pac-Man. Or the swizzle stick or something like that. And have a great time, have a great party building out this amazing cocktail hour quilt by Natalie Crabtree. So again, Natalie, thank you for being an amazing pattern partner for Michael Miller Fabrics. We couldn't do it without you. We love your designs. Thank you everybody for being here today to celebrate with me, not only the recovery, but that true love of textiles. So until next week when we see you with another fantastic tutorial. Be safe and happy sewing. Wow, you are still there. Thanks for sticking with me till the end of the video. I know, I get a little long-winded sometimes. But if you did enjoy today's video, make sure you check out a few of the other ones we've created. I think they're terrific. And of course, please subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the little bell to be notified. I don't want you to miss a moment of the fun. Stay safe and happy sewing.